Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics. Week three, lesson eight, animation introduction. In the last lesson, we got our first person controller set up, but our character right now is just this little box floating around. We want to use an actual character mesh for this. And we also want to animate this character so we can see it walking around the world. So in this lesson, we'll explain fundamentals of animation in Unreal Engine. We're gonna create a state machine for player movement, and we're also gonna create an animation montage for player interaction. Let's start by getting a few assets from Mixamo. Mixamo.com is a free service where you can get access to character models and animations. These are free to use in your project without ever needing to buy a license. As you can see, there's quite an assortment of characters to choose from. So browse through these and find a character that you like for your game. I chose this one, it's named as Adam. We wanna download this character and we wanna make sure it's in the FBX binary format with T-Pose. Next, we wanna get some animations. We want our character to be able to walk, be idle, and then interact with things in the scene. So let's start by getting the walk animation. This animation is called standard walk and make sure to select the in place. Otherwise it'll use root motion, select download. And here we want to select FBX without skin, 30 frames per second, keyframe reduction, none. Select download. Next we want an idle animation. I found this one that's just called idle. Let's download this as well. And the last thing we're gonna want is some way to indicate that the player is interacting with the scene. I found this button pushing animation and it's not exactly perfect, but it'll work for what we need. Let's download this as well. I'm gonna create a new folder in my models folder and call it character. And the first thing we wanna do is import our character model because we're gonna set that up to have the skeleton to use for our animations. And here I have the import options for my character mesh. For skeleton, we can use a skeleton that's already in the game, but since we don't have one yet, we'll leave this as none. And it's also very important that we import this as a skeletal mesh, so we wanna make sure that this is left checked on. And the final thing is we want to be able to set up a material for this character. So we can just use create new materials and it will set it up for us. Let's import all. When you import these models from Mixamo, it's standard for it to download all of these all at once. And some of these we're familiar with. We have texture files, materials, but over here towards the end, we have a few things we haven't seen yet. When we've imported our other models, they came through as static meshes. And this is a skeletal mesh. So let's talk through what some of these are. A skeletal mesh is a 3D model with a rig or skeleton. The rig has a hierarchy of bones that allow the user to animate the model. If we open this skeletal mesh, we can see our character. And then over here, we can see the skeleton tree. And we can see that there's a hierarchy of all these bones where the hips is the root bone. And then there's a left leg bone all the way down to left foot, left toe, right leg, and then the spine, shoulder, and arms, and so on. And we can use a skeletal mesh with its rig to animate our model. And this is done with a few different assets. An animation blueprint controls the animation of a model. It contains rules for when to switch animation states and also rules for how to blend between animations. An animation sequence contains transform data for a single animation. To put this in general terms, it contains information on how to move the bones of your rig over time. An animation montage is another type of animation and it allows us to selectively play animations or even combine multiple animations together. And root motion is when the root bone of the skeleton moves during the animation. Now for our project, we're not gonna use any animations with root motion, which is why we wanted to make sure that we selected our animations where stay in place. So let's get some of these set up on our character. I also now wanna import those animations we downloaded. Let's create a new folder and call it animations. 
and we'll import those animations here. Now when you're importing the animation, you want to select the skeleton that you want to match it to. And this is important because once it's been matched to a skeleton, you can't change it. You either need to re-import that animation or use another process called retargeting, which can take some time. Our skeleton will have the name of the character, import all. And now we can click on one of these and open it and see that animation in Unreal Engine on our character. So now that we have our animations and our character, the next asset we're gonna need is an animation blueprint. Let's right click in this folder, select animation and animation blueprint. And here it's asking us what skeleton do we wanna set this up for? Again, we wanna select the one for our character. And I'm gonna call this animbp player character. And let's open this up. Now, an animation blueprint has some similarities to our other blueprints we've been working with so far. Here, we have an event graph where we can set up functions, events, and variables. But there's also the anim graph. What the anim graph does is control switching between animations and how do we blend between them as well. Let's start by creating a state machine. Let's right click in here and type state machine we're gonna add new state machine. And we can change the name of this to just something like movement. And we notice the output of this is the input of the output pose. So let's just connect those for now. Let's open up our state machine and we see this. Now a state machine controls switching between different states of animation. Let's drag off entry and select add state. And we're gonna call this idle. Each one of these will represent an animation in our state machine. So we can open this and drag our idle animation and connect it. Now our idle state has an idle animation. Let's go back to our movement state machine and drag off of idle and select add state again. And this one we'll call walk. Let's open up walk and drag in our walk animation. Now we have a state machine that has two different states, idle and walk, but we need to control how do we switch between these states. And here, there's a transition rule, and this is where we can set up a rule for when to switch between idle to walk. And these will almost always have a Boolean as the transition. So what we need to do is create a rule that can be read as either true false for when to swap between these animations. And in our event graph, we can set up different variables for our character to control this bool. You'll notice this event graph came with two nodes already in. Update animation, which is similar to the tick event, and try get pawn owner, which allows us to gain access to the owner of this anim blueprint, which means the character. Let's drag off of this and say get velocity. This will return the velocity as a vector. We can use this for figuring out what direction our character is moving, or we can find the speed that our character is moving by dragging off of here and saying vector length. Let's take this float and make it a variable called speed, and we'll connect this into here. Now we have a speed variable, which will be greater than zero whenever our character is moving. So back here in our animation rule, we can get the speed and say, if it's greater than zero, we want to transition from idle to walk. And now we need to create a way to transition back. So let's drag from walk into idle, and you'll notice we now have an arrow going the other way. And we can set up this rule as well. And for this, we want to get our speed and say, if speed is equal to zero, let's go back to idle. Let's go to our player character and here where we set up our cube as our skeletal mesh, let's swap this out for the character that we have. And here in animation class, let's drop this down and choose our animation blueprint. Now we have our character in here and he's animated. We can check that our animation state machine is working by increasing our spring arm a little bit, compiling and pressing play. Now we can see when we move, our character is moving around in the scene, and when we stop, he goes back to an idle. 
but it looks like we're moving way too fast. So let's go to our player character and in the character movement, let's find the walk speed and decrease it. This may take some experimenting to find a value that works. You can also go into your walk animation and speed it up a little bit if you would like to do it that way. And now we have a character that's moving around in our level and he's animated. The next thing I wanna do is take my spring arm and connect it to my character mesh. And I'm also gonna move it up a little bit so it's at the height of his head. Now I can see my character when I look down. And now my character has a first person view and I can control it in the scene. I'm also noticing now that he's in there that this house is a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna grab the whole thing and scale it down a little bit. And the last thing we wanna do in this lesson is create an animation montage for our player interaction. If you remember, we also downloaded this button pushing animation. And again, this isn't necessarily perfect for our game, but it's good enough to demonstrate how to set up an animation montage. When you have an animation selected, you can right click and then say, create anim montage. This will create a new asset called an animation montage based upon this animation. And animation montages are handled a little bit differently. For this, we need to set up a slot in our anim graph. So let's drag off our state machine and type default and you'll get default slot. And you notice that it says plays animation from code using anim montage. In our project settings, let's set up a new action mapping and we're gonna call this interact. And for this, I wanna use the E key. Back in our player controller, let's find that event. And from here, let's drag off and type in montage, and we'll see there's a node called play montage. And this takes a few inputs. The skeletal mesh component is gonna be the mesh of our character. So we can take this reference to our player character, say get mesh, and then drag this into here. For the montage, we wanna find our montage. Let's test this out. And here I am playing the game, and if I look down and press E, I can see that my character now plays that montage. So now we have our animation state machine set up to switch between walking and idle, and we have an animation montage set up for our interaction event. In the next lesson, we're gonna create our very first actor component, and we're gonna use this component for our flashlight that our character will be carrying around. See you in the next lesson.